This is Julia with iCadenza, and I'm here with Klaus Heyman, the founder and president of Noxos, which is the world's leading classical music label, and I'm so thrilled to be here with you. So am I. My first question for you is, you first started out being introduced to classical music at a very young age living in Germany, um, but you never actually studied an instrument. Can you talk about your first impressions of classical music and and how you became so interested in it? Well, my mother took me to my first concert uh, at age nine. It was just after the end of the Second World War in a little spa town in Bavaria called Tegernsee. And uh, the Munich Philharmonic played, and uh, I was just fascinated by the whole thing. And uh, after that, uh, once we got back to our uh, hometown of Frankfurt, uh, I started going to uh, you, uh, youth concerts regularly, and I never listened to pop or rock or anything other than classical music. You won't believe it, but it's true. It's incredible. And when you first started <coughs> Noxos, many people were saying that there's no future for classical music, pretty much what they're saying today. What, what made you decide to, to start a, a company that was devoted to producing affordable classical music CDs? Well, uh, when we started Noxos in 1987, nobody was talking about the death of classical music or the classical music industry at that time. I had started a label called uh, Marco Polo uh, in 1982. That was a rarity label. And when we, um, uh, when CD prices started to become cheaper uh, in the late 80s, I decided to uh, uh, come out with a label that would sell the CDs for the price of an LP. Especially at the time, uh, CDs were very expensive in Hong Kong and uh, LPs were cheap. And when we started to come out with these uh, CDs at the price of, of an LP, it was a big success. Uh, and uh, I mean, people have been predicting the death of classical music for the last 50 years. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just not happening. It's been around for 300 years. It's probably going to be around for another 300 years. Absolutely. And you have always been quite close to the forefront of the new technolo technological advances. And uh, you created many wonderful resources that that students of classical music and, and universities and conservatories use. What made you choose to go that route? Well, um, in 1995, my warehouse manager in Hong Kong, who was a little bit of a techie, came to me and says, Mr. Heyman, we have to start a website. I said, what is a website? <laughs> I said, okay, I'll, don't worry, you know, uh, I'll do it. I said, okay, go ahead. Uh, and. Uh, he said, uh, I want to register Naxos.com. I said, no, uh, because we had two labels with Naxos and Marco Polo. Let's register H&H.com, which was a really stupid idea because that was a parent company. Uh, it took me a long time, many years, actually, to get the Naxos.com name. But anyway, so in 1996, we put our whole catalog online, uh, by far the first label. Uh, and when in 19... Uh, no, it's like 2002, uh, bandwidth costs started to become cheaper. Uh, I decided there might be a business making all that content available on a subscription basis. And that was the beginning of the Naxos Music Library, which is now, I think, a very important tool for universities, music schools, professional musicians. Uh, uh, many of our conductors say they cannot live without it anymore. It's a tremendous research tool. Uh, and uh, see, we are uh, an independent company, privately owned. Uh, uh, decisions are made very quickly. And if I have an idea, I said, guys, that's what we have to do. So when, for example, the iPad came out, I said, oh, we can now convert our books into e-books with embedded music. Uh, or uh, downloads, Apple came out uh, with iTunes. So, oh, we can do our own download site. So we have now a download site, subscription streaming site, e-books, all kinds of, uh, uh, and we, we're also pioneers now in Blu-ray audio. So it's because we're, we're, we're a small company, flexible, and uh, it's a very good decision-making structure. So it sounds like everything was very organic. There wasn't, it wasn't really a business plan decision to go into this other realm. No, I, I would say it's anything but organic. It's sort of uh, uh, impulsive, you know. Uh, it's uh, actually the, the way the company grew from being a budget label today to be a major distributor of, of uh, music digitally and physically with all the subsidiaries. Uh, very often it was born out of necessity uh, or it was born out of uh, an idea I had. 
we didn't have this great master plan. That this is that someday I would basically become uh, provide the infrastructure to our industry. And classical music for you has played a really important part in your life. Can you talk a little bit about class how classical music has touched you outside of your your business work throughout your life? Well, it's basically all I listen to, and it's uh, uh, it's my uh, it's my life, it's my mission. Uh, I'm married to a violinist, uh, and uh, she's teaching. Uh, I'm working my laptop on on music ideas. I mean, our whole life uh, really revolves around classical music, and I think it's uh, can be the most uplifting thing. I think uh, uh, music, especially classical music, can express many things. We cannot express in words. Uh, maybe a painter uh, can create a kind of mood uh, that classical music can do. But I think it's a, uh, it's probably the highest form of musical expression, and maybe the highest form of artistic expression uh, that there can be. Now, where do you see the classical music industry heading into the future? You mentioned all these technological advances, but what do you see for classical music? Now, uh, I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, nobody knows what, what it will look like five years from now. Uh, I think there will be downloads, will be part of the business, but not the biggest part. Uh, there will still be physical sales, uh, CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray discs, maybe uh, USB sticks. We don't know. There will be some kind of physical product. And I think the rest will be uh, uh, subscription services, like uh, on an all-you-can-eat principle. You pay a monthly or an annual subscription fee, maybe to your cable TV company, perhaps to your internet service provider, maybe the electricity company, somebody said maybe to your water company, and you get your music, and you can listen to as much music as you wish. One of these things will happen, and uh, it may be free, uh, advertising supported, or partly paid or fully paid, nobody knows. Uh, the industry is experimenting with many, many different formulas to see to how they can make money. Uh, there will be income from licensing our content to, to book publishers. Uh, movies still need music, background music. They may license that from us. Uh, but I think it will be, nobody knows exactly what the industry will look like, but there will be an industry, and uh, it will be, uh, will have to de collect money from many different resources, uh, from many different sources. It's no longer enough just to, to make a recording, put it out on a CD, and, and sell it in the shops. Because there are no more shops anywhere, very few shops left. Now, over the, the past 20 years, Naxos has really set itself apart as, as an incredible company and providing wonderful resources to everyone. Um, can you talk about how you approach marketing? Because you are really a global leader, and I, I can imagine that marketing in different nations is probably a very different, a different thing. Well, marketing, of course, has changed dramatically uh, over the last five to ten years, mainly due to the Internet. Uh, in the old days, if you wanted to promote a recording, uh, you had to advertise uh, in a specialist magazine. Uh, you had to get reviews in newspapers and, and in those magazines also. You had to get a lot of airplay. Today, most of that has shifted to the Internet. Uh, our website, naxas.com, has 250,000 subscribers. Uh, whereas the biggest circulation classical music magazine has a circulation of 40,000 copies. So we have five times the number of subscribers as uh, the best-selling classical music magazine. So we can reach a, a big audience by sending out uh, e-cards, uh, electronic newsletters, uh, our own platforms, Naxos Music Library, uh, Naxos uh, uh, ClassicsOnline.com, the download site, Again, they reach 50, 60, 70,000 people. So today, most of our marketing is on through these media, or you do it via blogs. Uh, uh, I'm now on Facebook. I have 382 friends, I think, as of today. Mm -hmm. you know, And so I can communicate with them now and spread the word. So things have changed dramatically. And in, our, in my opinion, for the better, because uh, in the old days, we could not compete with the major record companies and their big advertising and marketing budgets. You know, they had money to, to run big advertising campaigns. They had money to entertain the critics and uh, pay junkets to big festivals and concert performances. But nowadays, on the Internet, we can compete.